All right, the goal for today is to do a ring and pinion swap on a uh, 9906 front diff in a Chevy or GMC. We're already taking a few parts off. Took the, uh, the axles out. To get them, to get these out, I just tapped them with a uh, rubber mallet. They popped right on out, slid right on out. There's pieces here, I just wanted to show you. These set right here, so in case anybody's ever wondered how your parts it goes into four wheel drive. This piece here, if I can get the line back up, it lines up, and when you're going down the road, it rolls like this. And then when you hit the actuator, this fork right here slides a little bit and moves it, and then forces it to line up like this, so they both lock up, just like this here. Quick FYI. All right, let's start tearing this thing up and see how big of a mess we got. Going from a 373 to a 456. You're running 37, so. What's the easiest way you can be try to take this fella apart? I have a dial over here and I think what we're providing is a little electrolysis. This camera can't see this. I do have a catch pin. I must not put it on the ground. Brake parts cleaner is definitely your friend here. So I got 450,000 miles on it. That thing really don't look too bad. I have changed the wheel seals on here once, but I definitely didn't take it apart, so. Right, I've already gotten the Taking the pin off of here, the bolt off of the, the ring gear, I mean the pinion gear. Let's see if I can get it out of here. Man. 
Looks like Ragu is in there. Press leave. Yeah, these bears have probably seen better days. Alright. Probably gonna stop everybody there. I gotta go remove some bearings. Alright. What I'm attempting to do here is show people a lot of press. Another an alternative for putting their bearing on. I've had it on this burner. <clears throat> about 10 12 minutes you can also use a regular hot plate you can take a old cast iron or old skillet and put some oil in it burnt oil I've even seen people put them in the oven or a, a little toaster oven now if you put it in the oven it's probably gonna make your cookies taste funny just saying <clears throat> so you may not want to use the same oven that you make cookies or biscuits in all right let's see how well this is gonna work There you go, she's all the way down. Easy as that. Just let her cool off. And move on to the next part of the project. Hey, what I'm doing is trying to wall this out a little bit so that I can basically make a setup bearing to where if the shim I have, you know, obviously while the way starting the factory shim, but if it's not right. I can just pop it back off instead of having to press it off. Makes life a whole lot easier. That boys and girls is why you make a setup bearing and take the time to do that. It's right on, take it right off. So that way if I have to set up a couple of times, I don't have to press it on off and my final time I'll press it on. My weapon of choice to do it was just a regular old die grinder. I like using these little uh, sanding wheels to use for porting and polishing because it makes it nice even. Uh, it cleans it evenly to where if you use like grinding stone, stones and rough it out like that it'll get there but it may you know leave some bad edges and nick it you know, and nick this here which may not be no big deal but i figure you know better be safe than sorry i'm already out here rednecking up as it is in the woods here hey y'all just hanging with my peeps all right i'm sorry i just had to easter just ended so we got the 50 percent off candy so anyway, back to where we was. I've uh, done some stuff off camera, just because some of it in a hurry, some of it's hard to film. I've removed all the old races, all the old bearings, put some new ones on. So I'm gonna walk you through what I've done. Remove the bearing out of this here, which is like this one. Now, this one is a bitch. I guess you could go down and rent one of them little bearing poles, but it'd be a lot easier if it was still on the vehicle or attached to something. So you can't get a socket the same size to slide down here or same size as the bearing. This one's here a little bigger, but if you get one the same size, it will get stuck here, so it won't work. So what I wound up having to do is take a little bearing a little bit smaller, put an extension on it, kind of work on the edge, Slowly drive, you know, tap it, slowly drive it out. After, of course, after I already got the seal out. Now, the trick is when you put the seal back in, most of the sockets that I have that are big enough, or just a little bit bigger than the edge, they were hitting my edge. So I couldn't drop them all the way in. So what I wound up doing is taking the old crust sleeve 
set it right on in there just a little bit smaller put a socket on top of that upside down she went in beautifully so that's just a little secret for next if anyone having to do this you can use a crush leaf to put that particular bearing in put this out the way because we won't be needing it for a while Now when it comes to these little fellas, there are no shims for you to side load your carrier. Let me get a little closer to the camera so y'all can see. You can see it has uh, trustable locks on it like a, a, a Toyota for a nine inch. So, what I did is I marked it right here once I bent this up and I rotated it out and then counted how many times I had left, which you can see here I marked it. I guess you can see, I marked it seven and that's how many times it took to push it out. That also, when you push it out, pushes your race out if they don't fall out already. Yes, these races you don't drive in, they sit lightly because you have that uh, adjustability there. Wasn't able to press these bearings off. I couldn't get them into my press, couldn't get a pull on them. So what I went up doing is just taking a die grinder with a cutoff wheel and cutting them like that. And of course just draw this here on. These here are the type bearings that are in these here. I drove them all the, I screwed them all the way out, put them on my press, bought a socket on them, pressed them out, pressed new ones on. Also for here, same thing. I did put my new races in for my uh, pinion bearing. Drive in like any other. This one here is a bitch, because you can tell you have nothing to get to. I used the old race on top of it, just kept whacking it, took it forever, but I finally got it down. So, pretty much what brings you up to date. The next step is to put my ring gear on. So one of the things you want to do when you put a new ring gear on, First off, do a good cleaning. Get all the gunk off, make sure you ain't got nothing on it. When you're doing this here, brake parts cleaner is your friend. Next thing you want to do, make sure you ain't got no burrs from the manufacturing. So if you foul, just run it over across a couple times. Kind of start here, don't go like this. Kind of push up as you move across. I just make sure your surface is smooth. You ain't got no burrs, nothing there. Uh oh, oh here's my little bolts. These are the old bolts. I'm just going to use to help put them on. These are reverse thread. Gravity kind of kicks your ass sometimes. If you do it this way, some people say don't do it this way, it's bad for it, heat it up. If you want to heat your ring up, put it on, you can do it that way. 
remember if you do do it this way, don't pull one bolt up real tight. Kind of do a cross pattern just like you would if you were torquing it. Slowly work it up. Fun part begins taking these out, putting the real ones in. I'm not gonna make y'all watch this part here because I'm gonna take one out, put some Loctite on one and put it in and tighten them up, and then I'll torque them down. And let's see what our little instructions say. You'll be looking about right here. Just can the camera see that. There we go. You want to do between 45 and 50 foot pounds and a cross hatch master. All right, I got it all done. All torqued down. I cheated, I went to 60 foot pounds. Also, make sure you put your red light tight on here because you don't want this coming apart. Oh. And let's see what we start putting together. All right, let's get our pinion. This is a 456 pinion. This is my original shim to come with the other to start setting up to begin with. Now we made our setup bearing. So it comes off a lot easier. Just lie out down there. Make life so much nicer. All right. If we're not putting the crush sleeve in this time. It appears that I still have varnish on here. Try this one more time. Also not putting my seal on at this time. Make sure we don't damage that.
brace just dropped right in. That's it, just dropped right in. Well, like I said, I said it just dropped right in, but apparently it wants to be a little tight. Sorry about that, apparently that anchor is going to drop in, I had to drive it in a little bit. So I'm not real sure how that's going to work with the adjustable tension. I'm not sure how to push back, I guess we tighten the case down tight enough, I'm not real sure. Well, hopefully I don't have to make it tighter, I don't have to make it any looser because I guess I have to take the uh, thing all the way apart. and. Draw the bearing a little deeper and take the adjust, pull the adjuster out and draw the bearing deeper. I'm not sure, but hey, learning process for all of us, I guess. It's gonna come back apart, so I'm gonna lube up my dial pin area so it's not so hard to get back apart. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway. and just get real heavy real quick. And as tight as it is, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna have to move my backspace and back because she's not wanting to move at all. Well, she's moving. She's not tight on like the leg of be, so she's always taking a backlash. But I'm going to put some marking compound on her so I know which way we need to go so I'm just not just flying in the dark. smaller camera to see if we can show you the lash.
really ain't too bad. So we're just going to try to move the backlash some. So basically what I'm thinking, since it's already super tight, I need to remove some from this side. Add to the other. My battery's getting kind of low, so y'all might not see me do this one. Alright. The camera, like, when I told y'all was dying, I mean, it like, when I said it was dying, it died right then. So I got a little more juice in it, and I'm going to catch up to where I'm at now. Uh, basically, since it was so tight, I just backed off on this side. The easy way to back off is loosen all your little bolts up and then these adjusters will move real easily. If you try to keep them tight, you're going to have to fight with them. So what wind up happening is the adjuster on this one here, I wind up going half a turn and she wind up being beautiful. Oh, before I forget, I put a bead of silicone right around here. It actually come in my rebuild kit and the bearing kit, bearing setup kit. Now, don't get the urge just because there's nothing here, there's no bolt in here to go straight across. You want to come up here, there's an actual oil passage that comes back down through here to lube all this stuff. So don't shoot across there, or you won't be lubing things. And it'll probably be leaking elsewhere. Now, I was pretty happy with my pattern, with my pinion depth, so while you was recharging, I went on ahead and put the other uh, bearing on here, ran it down, threw my crush sleeve on, got her ready to go. Got a whole lot of juice left, so I got a few little things I can do. I explain them to you quicker after the fact. And I can't while I'm doing so. I'm gonna put y'all back on hold. All right, here we are again. Forgot to show you how you got to check your backlash on this one, since you obviously you can't do it on the inside. The only thing I've come up with, the only thing I've read, is you've actually got to put your meter, your your caliper, on the yoke. And you double what your output is supposed to be. So this thing is supposed to be between seven and nine. So you're it should roll roll between fourteen and nineteen. Now I can't get the camera over here to show y'all, but I'm hitting at about sixteen. Now I don't know how much this thing is moving or that's moving. I mean I can't get you know know how stuff to do it perfect so. But I'm moving at about 16, so I'm going to say as best I can to backlash her within spec. Now, I'm going to beat a silicone across the top of here, which is where this is going to go. First thing we got to do, put this little fella in. This one here. A little washer here you gotta go in. Go 
it. I'll fix the mess all up. Because the spring's got to go in first. Then you push this here in. Slide that around there. Got a little pin groove in here, not a pin ring. That's what slips into your shaft to hold it in place. So make sure that the short side is closer to the top. This here is surrounding a little washer you just put down there. This whole thing takes about six cotton picking hands. groove in here you notice I put some grease in it because this sets up in here so I put that grease in there so it'll hold it in place This right getting messy or not, but here we are. There you're done, just put your axle shafts back in, put it back in the truck. <laughs>